Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I am back to do some work with you on my housewife or my housewife or my needle roll, whatever you like to call it. So it's been a little while between updates on this because I've been having such a fun time working on my texture pieces following the Fleur Woods workshop. I've shared other videos on those so if you're interested in texture in stitchery, um, bringing your slow stitch and making it dimensional then you can definitely check those out. Um, but here is my Husswif and I've started stitching it together. I won't do the final stitching until all the elements are in place. Um, and worked out um, because I want to kind of make sure that it's rolling nicely but I wanted to give you a bit of a mocked up version where I've pinned and clipped things where I think they will go um, so you can see that and then we're going to work on some fun elements together and I hope these might give you some ideas for your own Husswif or for future projects like needle books or needle rolls or project bags etc. So um, a little recap, I'm using virtually all the materials uh, things that I found in op shops or charity stores or thrift stores when I was staying in Alpine Victoria recently so it's when um, just after we got the Husswith challenge from the Roxy Girls um, and I was then on a week's holiday and I thought yeah let's see if I can source all the, all the items that I need to use um, from the op shops up in this region and then it becomes a really little lovely um, holiday souvenir and it's just so fitting both for the theme of the Husswith but also being a little holiday souvenir that I found this lace calendar so it's actually a calendar 1991 and it's all done in in lace work and it's got a traveling um, caravan on it a little fire fireplace mountains butterflies flowers and thanks to everyone that solved the mystery of what this creature is um, I was thinking it was a didn't quite look like a fox and people have helped me out that it's a, a badger and that it's got the lovely um, a rabbit and a lovely bird another little creature down here so it's yeah really really lovely one of my elements has decided to fall out in the process but that's okay um, so that's going to be um, the front of my Husswif so it will sort of roll over something like this um, it will be quite thick um, quite big I like my things big I like to have lots of lots of dimension to play with now I'm just going to fix up the one thing that's just fallen itself out so this will be up here and so when the Husswif is opened so you'll turn it over you'll roll it open something like this I'll probably just need to bring the camera up a smidgeroo let me just do that so that we will be able to see everything and I might stand up while I give you the the preview so I can see myself so I think we're almost there let me just bring you up a, a tiny bit more okay hopefully there's not too many shadows it is evening time here when I tend to do my videos so this will be um, what you first see when you open the hoose with and I've thought about the things that I'm going to most readily need to access because this will swift I'll probably unroll but then sort of roll up if I'm traveling in the car I might just work with it with this section um, opened up probably down to about here I think um, sitting on my lap and so the first thing I've got and this will be one of the things we work on together tonight is um, a little pin cushion and I've had the idea which we'll come to to use these little magnets and to put it into these little lacework bits of the doily because then they will work fabulously one it will hold them in place and two it will then hold um, the needle onto it so even if I don't um, pin a needle into the pin cushion um, it will still have a place to hold it while I'm working up here so I've got a needle book further down um, at the very bottom but it'll just mean I have a place to put my my working needle while I'm using it so that's the pin cushion and I'm just going to finish um, doing the stitching on pins and then I'll show you the construction of that um, in a moment when we get back to it um, I'll show you how I've made this little um, scissor scissor keep. Um, it's really easy to take the scissors off, but when you're actually traveling, you can also um, clip the scissors into it and clip them around the buttons. 
and they will not go anywhere they will not move around at all so I'll show you how I've used these little coasters that were originally wine glass they sit on the bottom of a wine glass and stop it scratching the table thanks for those that confirmed my um, suspicions on that um, I'll yeah show you how I've made the little scissor keep out of that I've also got a little thread keep using another one that I got so I got two varieties of these in bright um, I'm planning to have and I'll probably just stitch the top and the bottom one down um, this these little vintage Suffolk puffs and I'll keep them as my little holders for these quilt clips because I find quilt clips incredibly handy to have and so I thought I'd make a little garland using um, the Suffolk puffs and have them as clips. The bonus is if I ever want to add a Suffolk puff to the project I'm working on I can always raid one or two out of this little garland as we go forwards. Now the great thing with um, the calendar, the lace calendar, is it had more width in it. So what I've done is wrapped one edge of it over and that's given me a whole series of pockets down the side. Let me just slide it down a smidge. So for example, I've created a little pocket up here just as a little practice by doing a stitch across here. And it's the perfect place to keep one of my um, homemade vintage button cards. So I've used some lovely William Morris paper on the back. I've got a piece of card in the middle and then I've printed out um, this little button card. I'll try to remember to put a link um, to these cards in the description. If I don't, just leave me a comment and I'll remember to do that. And I've put some of my lovely vintage Mother of Pearl buttons sewn those on so I just stitched them with a crochet thread and because this design has this sweet little uh, motif of a dressmaker's model I've done some stitches across the the waist of it to just anchor the starting and finishing thread but the great thing is I'll be able to um, undo that and then just remove one button at a time if I want but leave the, the rest attached so that fits beautifully in this little pocket so I'll probably, when I do it, end up putting the pins, one just stitching it down so that it doesn't obscure, obscure the pocket. Um, so I've talked about that, talked about that, talked about that. This is my, you might think it's an R, um, apologies, I've got the window open and the bus is just going by. Um, and this is my aught, so we'll, um, we might do some stitching and I'll show you how I'm doing it using the mesh of the vintage doily so o r t and then we'll n s so whether we get all of that stitched together but i'll show you the process and the idea behind this is it will be a place that i can take some threads if i get some loose threads when i'm working so say what i've just cleaned up off my desk um, particularly when i'm in the car alex is always joking that i leave fibers and, and threads around the place so it's the perfect thing that I can just pop them on there and then they'll be kept nice and secure. And I'm using some of that lovely wool blanket that I used for my needle book or my needle keep. Um, and the, the blanket is quite good at kind of, I guess, grasping onto um, threads. And this doily that I've put on the front is really good at not grasping onto threads. So they tend to stay stuck to the blanket. And I thought for an extra bit of fun, I will attach one of my little oort balls so made with threads and I've got a separate video on those as well if you want to check that out they're a lot of fun to make and I'll probably put that on as though it's a little button down the bottom or a little handle so that's that first section oh and I need to show you this whether I'll leave this in I don't tend to use measuring tapes that much but I wanted to put some of my vintage um, measuring tape on there this beautiful rusted out one that I'm gradually gradually eating into there still feels like there's a lot left inside but I'll be very sad when it sort of comes to the comes to the end so I'll have that running across here at the bottom of a pocket um, I've got some pins in for where I think the pockets will be but I'll sort of leave those again till the end to stitch and I've got this um, old I picked this up actually with a sewing box that I picked up off the nature strip Now I shared that a while back in the videos and this was just in there and it's a little measuring tape that comes out like that and then you press the middle of the hash and it goes springing back inside now I'm not sure I could leave the hat as it is or I could take it apart 
and put it in one of these little ones. So I'm going to keep that option. For now I'll just pop it in there um, and we can come back and consider whether we do that. So I'll just fold this down for now so that we can keep, keep going forward. Just do that. So in the next section, um, I've got this little, it's just a plasticky, um, I got them because I thought they'd be great sticking out, out from my texture works, but I actually think it'd be good to have a little hangy place where you can, for example, um, loop some threads on if you wanted to. So for example, if you had some wool, you could just pop it, pop it through. And you've got something to have it have it looped onto while you work with it, or you could put a variety of threads looped on. I might even put a couple across there, but I thought rather than leaving it with its plasticiness, even um, I did get it in Bright and I did get it at the op shop, so it's totally fitting in with that. I thought I might use some of this vintage lace that I've actually got in my stash to do um, a wrapping, a wrapping of it, so you start to see the lace rather than um, the curtain reel. So. Yeah, I thought that could be a good little thing to do. I'll show you um, how I have made this as well, which is a little holder, and I haven't stitched it all together yet, but a holder for fabric scraps. So I figured if I'm going to use this a bit like a project roll when I'm traveling, I want to be able to put in some scraps of fabric that I'm wanting to use for my projects. And often they're just this sort of a size where you've got little bits that you've um, cut off or sampled because you know you're gonna you might want to use them in your project In this case, they were all blues which were ones that came away with me on my my last trip And so I've actually just um, put some bits of um, Elastic from my very big roll of elastic that I got at the reverse art truck um, I'll just take the fabric off for a moment to show you um, I've used some of this tapestry fabric that I got from the op shop in Beechworth. I'll take a few more little thready bits off Quite like the fringy bits on the on the end. Feels like there's probably one more wanting to come out from there, or two more. There we go. Um, and I've also used some bits of cork that I got from the reverse art truck as well. So I've put two of those bits of cork. They're just like a cork um, board, but I'm able to stitch through them. So what I did was came through from the back, and then I've done um, a stitch across there gone through to the back, come through again, done a stitch across and a stitch across. So this is a single piece of elastic um, and I have just um, put those in place and that then gives me something to put the fabric underneath. And so then I'll just, um, now that I've shown you how it's made, I'll be doing some stitching all the way around to enclose um, the cork inside and that will be just a great little place to keep my fabrics so whether we get that stitching done together or I might do it separately or I might do it in another video so that's that um, this is then a little pocket that I will create um, by stitching around so that it's mostly stitched and it will be a place for example to keep um, my a selection of beads or something whether it's in one of these tins or whether I repurpose one of my other little um, tins little plastic tins or um, metal tin might be nice, but yeah, it'll just be a, a flexible little pocket, but I think it goes quite nicely with the, the colour scheme. Um, over here, I thought that would be great to have a pocket for my matchboxes, um, and they're the fabric covered ones. Originally, I was thinking I'd actually stitch them in from their bases, but I think they'll work really well being able to get them out, because that way if I've got some things in them, I can kind of lift it out move it around whereas if they're attached I'm a bit more limited with what what I can do with them so I figure I can make a nice little pocket for them down here plus a pocket for the two little individual ones but again if you were wanting to stitch them down you'd just do some little catching stitches along the side or you could equally make yourself a little um, like a little buckle for them that they could slide in and out of. So those will go in there and again I'll finish sewing those pockets sort of towards the end. Then let me just um, actually give it a bit of a, a further fold up I think as we go. 
Then I'm planning to have um, my beautiful bird's pocket. So again, a beautiful piece of embroidery I picked up. I thought I'll probably just go with a um, very straightforward pocket, just an open pocket that I can pop things into. Um, haven't planned out exactly the purpose for these bottom pockets yet, um, but I figure they can kind of be adaptable depending on what I'm wanting to take with me. Um, and then this one has, I think, fallen out. So I'll probably, I think I've got a few different options for, for my such weather. I think that would go best. So I'm just looking at those. We'll get down to those in a moment, actually. Let me just um, roll roll this bit over so we get that closed up and then there will be a spot for a pocket here and a spot for a pocket here unless there's anything else I'm just having a look at I've got a huge stash of doilies from um, from my trip to bright and surrounds and the op shopping there unless I want to mix it up and have a different different colored one different styled one the other thing I was thinking about and it is a definite possibility is I could make a little envelope from one of these type of doilies it wouldn't give me as much bulk which might not be a bad thing as I think about it so that's another possibility I probably don't have to decide absolutely right now but I was wanting to give you a bit of a bit of a sense of where I was heading or I'm actually now thinking aloud and sometimes we like to adapt as we go I think the birds one would actually look really nice down here so what I might do because it's got that blue that follows on beautifully I think from the the blanket one so we might adapt uh, this one being here and because it's got the folded over bottom and the folded over sides it can be a pocket that's got a bit more um, because I can attach it by the lower bit so it almost gives it a bit more dimension if it needs it now in my um, needle case that's where I'm going to keep my um, my threader for my punch needle as well as um, my little one of or at the moment one of them is in there but I'll probably end up keeping my other one in there as well and I've created a little uh, cork mat to keep it keep it in but I'll just pop it out for now um, and I'll pop my punch needle threader out for now as well so yeah if we had it like that and that that would work pretty well I think um, and I've got my little wooden um, needle holder as well that I'll probably make a little mini pocket in here for that just by stitching stitching that down so it holds it securely and that might also be I'm thinking oh, actually I could do it in here I'd like somewhere to put my little yoohoo glue, glue stick because I do sometimes use that when I'm doing English paper piecing and other other things so if we had it like that it's then just a question of what I want to have as my pocket here just having a having a ponder that wouldn't really give me enough space I do have some other lovely lovely doilies but they tend to be a bit thinner a bit more flimsy through my pile and having a look this does have the blues and the pinks so again it would tie in quite quite nicely to some of the other, other colors I've got these ones which had been painted but not actually stitched but no I don't think those ones if there's anything else hiding here that I might want to want to consider there's this one which could be a bigger bigger pocket but probably too big um, 
two of these whether I could do anything putting those ones together or whether I'd want to do two little or I could do a side pocket but no I don't think so I think I want to keep the sort of straight straight across pockets This one, which is a rose, which is actually quite nice as well, actually. Whether I'd like to leave it, um, leave the edging on, and whether I would need to shorten it at all. Or whether I'd have that as a little slide-in pocket so I could put some things that were longer in it or have it as a little I could stitch it down on one side hmm choices choices it's got a stain there so I will want to probably cover that up not that stains worry me too too much I just don't know if that's going to end up being too big if I have it like like that I think it would be too too large so what are the options if I had it as a pocket like that that something can so if I stitch down two sides of it and something could slide in and then maybe I don't know, I'm just thinking 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 it's a shame to kind of lose the rose on on one side, isn't it? Or do I just fold it down a tiny bit on both both ends? And then it could actually be another one of the sort of more open open pockets. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, they're the worst, aren't they? There's that, but it, that doesn't seem to be totally, totally meeting the brief. So I'm just going to, again, just have a have a look what else is in my pile here from the Bright Up Shops. I do like the colour of that, and it goes nicely with the flowers. So could that perform a, a purpose? Or would I? It's probably going to be too big if it's all the way across there unless it's stitching down there and again it's just something where I can pop something inside of it whether for example let me just move this one for a secky there's a lot of pondering going on in this video but sometimes there has to be pondering hey um, it could be a place where I could put fabrics for example and slip those fabrics in there so that's a thought I don't actually mind that because I think it looks quite nice coming down coming down like that I think that's kind of cool and then that pocket up on the side could be for something else or we go back to having one of our other just looking for where they've gone one of our other tapestry style ones So we could have two, so we'd go from our blue blanket through to our, which you can't see, the birds, through to this one which has some blue in it, and then through to this one which is, yeah, more similar, unless we went to this one which is actually a little on the different, different side. And actually this one probably does go better with what it's going up to. So I think actually I might end up going with this because I think it will probably end up more useful having having an actual pocket. Hard to tell really. Hard to tell. Okay, well what I might do is I might click my two options there and then when I come to be ready for the stitching, sorry things are falling out of my um, needle, needle because I haven't got the closure on that. 
um, I will I will clip this one on and I'll put this underneath and it might even be nice even just to have even if this one isn't or the other option also that I was thinking about with these pockets is I can create another little pocket at the back of them as well or in this case I could create a little slide in pocket at the back with this piece of embroidery but it might be nice to have the embroidery there regardless so I'll just clip that on for now so I know where I want it to be so what I'm going to do now is um, fold up my needle book needle roll not needle book needle roll so that we can get up to the top where we're going to be doing some of our um, getting some of our pieces and doing some work so what I might do now is bring you down so I can see what you can see and we can do some work on the elements so let's start I reckon with our little um, pin cushion um, which we are going to add some magnetic detail to as well so we'll just finish doing I'm just using a little split stitch to do this I'm trying to look where all my needles have gone I'm sure I probably knocked some off the desk in the process but such is such is life all spare in in love and um, knocking of needles but let's just have a look where I've got a needle that I actually want to want to use Have I got any of my favourite needles here? I can't see them, so I'm going to go up to get some needles from up here. One of my favourite chenille needles, I think, would be the go. Always good to bust out a new needle. So it's funny, I sat down before dinner because I had a dinner already. It was um, dinner from the, another night's cooking, which was good. And I sat down thinking, oh, I'll do a video before dinner. But um, I ended up just, yeah, playing and pin pinning things in my, my needle roll. And before I knew it, it was dinner time. Well, it was actually a little bit past dinner. And I could hear Travis outside my craft room sort of making some noises because it's his, his second dinner. He gets two, two plates of veggies with a little bit of meat as two different dinners. I don't know how we got conned into doing that for him, but we do portion control, keep him, keep him healthy. So I'll show you how I've prepared the inside. I'm not using walnut shells, and um, I didn't have any on hand. I understand you can get them at pet stores because I think they, they're used in enclosures for animals. But there's actually a place in um, not too far away in Carrum Downs, I think, in Victoria that. Um, is a walnut shell producer so at some point I'll get some can't tell you how nice this needle feels it's so sharp it's just making me think some of my other ones are must be terribly blunt so so many wonderful swifts have I seen on the the Roxy group and um, from other folks that are creating them it's just so so inspiring and I just love how we can all all play and come up with our own own variations but yeah I'm really happy it's starting to come together I thought I'd better get my skates on because the end of the month is fast approaching and then we'll have another another fun project from the girls so with split stitch I'm just um, popping up halfway through the previous stitch didn't quite do properly so I'm just going to go back and put a stitch in because you basically yeah, want to be splitting each of the stitches and it just gives you a nice overlapping finish and I'm using some of this lovely Aurafil yarn that I got at the quilt store in Bright I think it's called Alpine Quilts I don't think I've got the card directly handy in front of me but it's the only quilt store in the township of Bright so I'm sure you could look it up but yeah, really loving the, the sheen on these, these threads. But yeah, a new brand new needle. Folks, if you've been working away with your standard needles, which I tend to do, just use what's there until I knock them all off the desk, as I think I did with my Husswift tonight. Um, getting a brand new needle, it feels great. 
See, isn't that funny? The, the simple pleasures in life, a brand new needle can be a simple pleasure in life. It's funny, I always think, oh, I'm not going to have enough to sort of um, cover in a video. And then when you kind of get started, it's, yeah, everything, it even takes time just to do a little talk through and then ponder things yourself and, and then even working on the stitching. Sometimes I'm kind of reluctant to put the video on because I'm like, do I actually have stuff to, to show, to share? And sometimes you, when you're a bit tired as well, it's, you sort of think it's a big barrier. But given I'm here normally, and otherwise I would probably just have a, yeah, another YouTuber on and watch, watching them, or if I need sort of total um, brain phase out, I do put my Midsummer Murders on for mindless, not mindless, but um, very sort of, yeah, a bit of, a bit of humour quite quirky. But I don't tend to really watch mainstream TV anymore. It's funny when we're in Bright because the um, the signal, for whatever reason, I'm, we're not sure if it was the TV at the accommodation we were staying at or because they had actually told us before we came that they were having TV signal problems after the storms. Um, so we just, yeah, we didn't have a, a working, a t the TV was there but it just didn't pick up any anything. Um, which didn't worry me at all, but it was just funny watching my parents and even Alex is used to watching the sort of the morning TV, whereas I'm very happy in the morning. I tend to get up, get dressed, and if Travis needs his breakfast made, make his breakfast for him and um, and then go for a walk with Travis, then come home, get my coffee, and usually I then sort of head upstairs. So I'm not someone that tends to like to have um, the TV. I don't like to have all that all that kind of world in the morning. I like to just have a quiet easing into the day. I enjoy the walk with Travis because it gives me a good time to sort of set my thoughts for the day, think about anything that I want to kind of plan out, what I want to achieve, but also just kind of appreciate the morning, appreciate the quiet. It's been beautiful, cool mornings lately. Um, a real chill in the air, even a bit of fog. Um, but then it warms right up. Today I had to this afternoon it was getting so warm in, in the craft room so I had to open up the windows and let a bit of breeze in but at least we're getting that nice coolness at night as well even after a warmer warmer day. I think I've just what have I done there. I might go back and just fix that with a stitch if I can. I think I've just split the thread but then caught it maybe twice. So it's just sort of going out a bit loopy. What do I do? I might put it, I might just wrap it around and see if that will if that will fix the problem. Yeah, that's better. Some, something nice about, about putting little bits of writing on. I feel it was like the old times where people would, um, yeah, would add their own personalizations to their their stitcheries and I know with the Huswifts in the history like if someone was making one for someone going off to war they might stitch their their initials on or the person's initials some people added entire little samplers to theirs so lots of lovely tradition in these these needle rolls Huswifts or housewives or Hussifs H-U-S-S-I-F lots of variations because that's I think also how our language used to refer to that. So it's funny how our language has evolved as well, but some of the, um, I guess, the items from the times give us a hint back to how words were actually um, said and spelt. The evolution of language I find really, really fascinating. So there we go, that's pins. So I'll just tie it off at the back with a couple of little knots. A lovely linen doily. I, I really did do so well when I'm looking. I've kept all the things that I got in Bright separate because they're for this particular project in the first instance. But I've just got such a lovely stash from um, from Bright and Surrounds. A little loop there, but I think it's going to hold fine, so that's not a problem. So then for the inside, what I've done is I've used some of the inside of. I'm just trying to remember what this came off. If that's right, it came off one of the, I don't know if it's here, 
I think I've probably uh, yeah, got rid of it. But it was a new image on it. I have got it here. Let me just find it. I saw it before. There we go. Came off this, um, I think it would have been like a curtain wrap or something. But inside it's got some fluff, which I've used. It's got some of this um, thicker layer, which is actually quite good because um, needles don't tend to kind of go through it too easily so I thought it's a good way not to have too much bulk but just to put some layers multiple layers of the white at the bottom and a single layer at the top this needle's quite sharp so it will actually easily go in but then once it gets to the bottom it's actually meeting a bit of resistance so I don't think it will go through too much and so then I've just made a sandwich with some of the multiple layers of the um, the fluff which I stitched together first and then I've stitched around to stitch the little layer cake together and so the idea then is that this will sit in there and so in this originally I was thinking that I would have these not lining up but because I want to put the magnets into them I think I will probably try to try to line them up and I'm thinking I'll just do a row of the blue stitching to stitch the pincushion closed and then we can come back and do at least one magnet together to show you the, the concept. So thank you again to everyone um, that shared their suggestions of what they're either putting in or would put in their hoose whiff. And I will be doing my special little draw. I'll just leave it for tonight because it's a Monday. No, it's Tuesday night here. So I could have, could have done it, but I haven't prepared for the draw yet. Um, so I'll probably end up doing that um, tomorrow instead. Or is it Wednesday today? No, I'm losing track of the days. No, it's no, it's Tuesday. <laughs> I'm going to the zoo tomorrow. We're having a work workshop at the Melbourne Zoo. I'm not a huge one for zoos, but um, it'll be it'll be good to go somewhere, somewhere out of the norm. And I do love the animals. I just sometimes feel sorry for them in zoos. But we do have a very progressive zoo here in here in Melbourne, so. I hope the animals are, are happy there. Now what I might do first is I might actually just anchor my knot into, into here because it's harder to get it to anchor um, in the lace work. And then I will bring, begin the process of a stitcherooing. I thought, yeah, it's a fun idea to use a little doily with all the lacy bits and extra bonus idea when I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be good to have some magnets? Where could I put those? And I'm not sure how strong these magnets are. Um, they're these magnetic dots from Sullivan's that I got from the variety store in Bright again. Um, but I think, yeah, they definitely work through the lace. I'm not sure how they'd work through multiple levels of um, fabric or, um, for example, felt or anything like that. So it's probably good that I'm planning to use them for this application. So I think I'll just go in and out through the... lace work. I don't know how whether I'm managing it on both sides but it probably doesn't actually matter on the bottom because we're not going to see it so I'll just make sure it looks nice and neat over on this side but I might put a clip in just so I make sure I'm staying somewhat on on song. thought it was nice to use the contrasting blue. I can't believe we get that many buses. I never, I barely, saw, I do see the bus in the morning when I'm walking Travis and yeah, I never thought they ran this late. I haven't used public transport. I used to travel on the tram every morning to, to work. I would get up very early, 5.20 in the morning and head to, head for my morning swim on the tram, walk across South Bank and then head down to work after that, up through the walk up through the city. So I was a commensurate um, tram user, but these days I just don't tend to use public transport. Being out here in Berwick, um, yeah, it's, a, it's further to the city and because I only go into work 
once in a while and it's good to kind of have the flexibility to come and go as I as I please I tend to just um, yeah drive drive in and out and then you can do those sort of multi trips as well where you might need to drop into the dentist or something like that and you can you can do that more easily than when you're trying to join up on public transport we've got a very good um, system for getting in and out of the city but not as good for the sort of cross town travel they are trying to trying to address that but some cities have much better I mean the Paris metro is a classic example where you can get anywhere just by connecting across your different metro stations my window open here and I can smell smoke I hope it's I hope it's maybe maybe it's cold enough that someone's put their fire on it certainly doesn't feel that cold I'm sitting here in a singlet top with the window open because it is warm hopefully it's not a, a grass fire or something anywhere hasn't really been the conditions where you would expect that but it's quite smoky smelling Just keep going around and then we can put one of the one of the magnets in. I can always come back and do some of the other I'm finishing up the other bits of the the roll with you anyway in a separate video. But we'll see what else we can get done today. And I'll show you the yeah, the scissors construction in a bit more detail in case you have one of those little wine glass ones. It seems the perfect size for the small little embroidery scissors. The pair I've put in there are the lovely ones that Fleur Woods included in her kit that she gave us as part of our art retreat. So kind of her because she said that one of her previous classes um, she'd had a class set of scissors and they were all so sad to give them back so she decided to, to have scissors that we could um, yeah use and take with us so she's such a sweetheart Fleur. And so lovely to see the winners of um, the little giveaway of Fleur's book that um, Sarah and Rachel did, including my good friend Martha. So well done, Martha. So, so thrilled for you. I had to send you a message last night because I was so excited, even though it was bedtime. I was a bit late in catching up on the, the videos. And then when I saw your name, I was like, that's just perfect because we had been talking about Fleur's book. Sometimes I feel like the universe does, does deliver, does deliver well. Okay, we'll get round to here, put one final stitchery in. I might take it to the back it off on the back where we won't see it. Put one stitch over there and I'll try not get to get a loopy loopy loo this time. Okay a little bit of an end. So there we go. We've done a pretty good job of keeping the, the bits together. So if we wanted to put a little magnet, so these ones I think are ones that you can peel off and stick on, but I don't think I need to need to do that because I'm planning to just stitch, stitch around. And I wonder if I put it low down or do I put two in? Do I put one up here and one a bit further down? Or do I, I've got plenty of them. So I could actually put a few in unless they're going to stick to each other. Have a, have a look sometimes they sort of push away or they will try and try and sort of conglomerate yeah I reckon maybe three maybe I'll just do it in but as I say I've got pl plenty of them so probably no harm really so question is do I want to use the blue and stitch around Or do I use a white and go in a bit closer? I think I'll actually just use a white, whitish 
if it won't show up too much I think that will work okay and then that way I can really hold the magnets better in place I think And so my other thinking for this is that I'll use the little, I've now got some beautiful little um, applique or applique pins. Um, and these will also, these are also small enough that they won't go through to the, the back as well. So that was my other thinking. So these are really fabulous. I've been looking for them for a long time. Um, and so it was great to again find them at that bright quilt store. I actually had one more op shop for, um, find in Bright that I don't think I've shared in a video. I've still got the video sitting there, so I will attach it to one of my one of my future videos. I might even do it as a combo with the draw. I might do the draw of my winner, and I could share that at the end as well, possibly. We shall see. Okay, so I might start... How do I want to do this? Or do I actually want to use this stickiness just to hold them in place while I get... I might do that actually, while I get them stuck down or stitched down actually, more to the point. I'll use the, use the temporary stickiness. And that will stop them moving around as well. Maybe if I put four, four on rid of these little plasticky bits. It's always a pity to have plasticky bits but sometimes I guess they need them when they have got a little stick surface. Okay so and then I can just actually I'll need to probably come through as I did before through a bit of the fabric to catch that first and get the knot to get the knot to catch. Ugh. It's a bit hard. It's actually I'm actually very glad that I did stick them down because it would be even harder if they were actually moving around. So I'm glad I'm using them because I wasn't sure. I was originally thinking, oh, I don't know how they'll go with if I put them in a like in a purse or a sort of a little clippy fabric envelope. But maybe putting them under some lace is a good idea, even if I'm doing that. That can be what holds them there. They can sit more on the surface, more as a decorative little feature. So that's an idea if your magnets aren't super strong. I know you can get the really strong ones for being a little um, needle keep, but these were just a couple of dollars and I figured um, for a pack of a whole lot of them. So I figured, yeah, that would be, they'd be useful regardless. And again, for this project, I thought closures might be a handy thing to have. So I might even use some of these on the closures of my little pouches as well. Or I could use some of my lovely um, fabric covered buttons that I've done. I've actually popped some of those. Oops, there goes one of my tins dropping down. Um, I've popped some of um, my beautiful hand done fabric covered buttons on one of these little button cards. So I might even use some of those on my pouches as well. They were made before Bright, but I'm happy to use some things that aren't directly from Bright. Now, what have I done there? I think I've gone over, gone from the back to the front, whereas I should be just going back through the crochet to the front. Luckily, I noticed in time. So yeah, lots more still to add to this, I think, or at least to kind of get all the, the stitching done on. So I think I probably will be back in another another video. We've still got about 10 minutes, so I think we'll be able to at least look at a few more things together. But I think I showed you most of the current elements as I went through, but maybe we can have a go at deconstructing that little measuring tape and working out whether we 
whether we keep it as a hat or turn it into our own little bespoke one. So I'm actually just yeah going right where the magnets are, so just right around the outside of them to hold them really firmly when the adhesive stops working. But be using the white thread is good because you can't actually yeah see the thread. You can just see where it's where it's anchoring down the the magnets. Oops, have I done the trick again? I have, haven't I? Christine, that happens when you turn it over, isn't it? And you sort of, your muscle memory tells you to do a stitch one way, but it's actually the wrong way. Okay. That is the only problem with using like a light coloured thread is your brain doesn't really get that, that visual cue. Or you're too busy chatting away like I am. Now I've seen a few of my um, YouTube friends saying recently to folks um, because apparently some people might think that when you subscribe to a channel there's a charge or something involved in it but there absolutely is not. Um, you can subscribe to as many ch channels as you like on YouTube and it's a totally free activity to do and what it does do for the people that are sharing their videos and their ideas is it lets YouTube know that other people might be interested in um, seeing that content um, and so yeah subscribing does help out the people that are making videos and sharing sharing things um, but yeah I didn't realize that was kind of a, a misconception I kind of get it because normally a subscription does cost money but yeah absolutely if you hit the subscribe button below this video it's not going to cost you a cent and it will just mean that you um, will be able to see in your subscriptions list um, any videos that I um, share and if you click the little notify button then it, yeah, it will send you a, it will let you know when I've got a, a new video out which is handy when you're sort of a, like you don't I don't always do a video every day so it's a good way to know when something's something's on the go so there we go look how nicely that that works it just um, grabs the grabs the needle the needle doesn't fall off and so if I'm working in the car I can just throw my needle down there, well not throw it, I won't throw it around, Elixir to have conniptions, um, but it gives it somewhere to rest, so I think I'll probably proceed to do that. Um, I think I've got enough of my little magnets at least, probably for these two bits down here, I think. Um, and it gives it a nice little bit of weight as well. So I will just proceed to tie that off, I think. And then, we'll just have a quick look. Maybe we'll have a quick de, um, not decomposing, a quick deconstruction of the little hat. Unless folks think that it absolutely, I should keep the hat in its current form. Let's have a look at it and and make a make a little decision on that. I was going to show you the actually I should maybe I'll come back and do that in the next video. We can do the little um, orts. Um, stitching so I'll come back and do that because that will probably take and then we can spend some decent time on that. Let's have a little look at our hat and yeah I can show you the scissors in more detail in a video another video and then I think we can actually start stitching down and making some of the pouches as well and then obviously we've also got the stitching down and stitching together of this piece but that's a pretty straightforward stitching around um, task to do on our little fabric holder. So our hat, what do we think? The colours are a bit gaudy for this because our stitch roll does have pinks but not that gaudy of a pink so I do think I am going to deconstruct it and I do think it would sit quite nicely in here so let's see if we can deconstruct in a way that we don't Totally. It feels like it's only a cardboard inside, so I think I'm going to probably cut the cut this piece here. Let's see if I can get it to sort of open up. It's quite well stitched around, actually. I mean, it was very. It was a cute little sort of retro piece, but.
But at least if you wanted to make a little hatty shaped one, you'll get to see how it is how it is constructed. So yeah, it is just a piece of cardboard that's been used in the base. And then we have our little measuring tape. We've got some wadding, we've got some stitches running all the way sort of over. And so I'll just probably need to extricate the this bit from there. Extricate it out. And what does it tell us? Plastic real ruler. T D G J. Looks quite old because it's got a bit of yellowing to the to the actual actual ruler. But yeah, it still works fabulously. Now it's weather. I do have some slightly small ones. I've got two sizes in these. Let me see if I can readily find because it may well be that the the smaller size one would be would be good. I've got the whole pile next to me sitting here. Going through it, as I say, I've got a lot of a lot of things in the pile here. So that's that same size. There is a second design that's a smaller, smaller size. Nope, that's the same size. Where have I got my other size sitting around here? Or have they fallen down somewhere? Or are they over here? Looking, looking. Can't, can't see them there, um, but it's possible that one of the smaller ones, I could just borrow this smaller one that I've got with the threads at the moment, because that's the size I'm thinking of. So that's this size. If I stitched it, it may be one that I can just actually stitch down and then would I need a spot that the measuring tape could come out of. And if I pressed it, it's going to spring back, but it won't spring back all the way if I... So what I might do is sew a little, a little um, stitch along here and leave the centre the center bit and then that way I can either stitch it down or again it can just slip into the pocket and it will still work and it will now be this lovely little it'll be a little matching so yeah I'll use one of these smaller ones I'll need to find where they have slipped away to um, and I'll yeah continue to use the small one for the threads as well so I think that's probably enough we're at the 58 minute mark um, so I'll probably see you in another video to keep working on this horse with because there's definitely work to be done and hopefully you might like to bring along your own project and stitch away while we um, yeah work on our various various bits and pieces so thanks everyone for watching and stay tuned for my little giveaway um, draw um, yeah it will be closed now for entries or I'll let it run no because it's Tuesday so it was closing yesterday um, and then I will yeah, do, do the draw probably tomorrow. So thanks everyone and I'll see you soon. Bye.